Because, you know, they're wired in, they know the solution. I don't. I'm currently in tutorial hell, so yeah, okay. So, okay, you're currently in tutorial hell. First of all, all right, I'm gonna be an NPC for a second. We're gonna be a little NPC, all right? Made short games, okay. Okay. So you made some games. That's tight, that's more than many people can say. So what type of tutorial hell are you in, right? Are you trying to learn, like, Let's start about field, right? Like, what field of programming are you in tutorial hell for? Are you in tutorial hell for web development? Are you just trying to, like, do some system stuff? Like, where are we in this tutorial hell situation, right? And what are you trying to get out of it? What are you trying to do? Like, Unity. Okay. Making 3D games. Okay, okay, okay. So you, your goal is to make 3D games. But these, there's just too many functions. Like to look at how you solve problems and way of thinking of code, of code, and organize. Okay, that I can see that. Then it might be beneficial then if I take time, like some moments, to uh, talk a little bit about what we're doing. And by the way, if you guys ever have questions, feel free to let me know, and I can just take a pause, take a beat. I'll pull out Miro, we'll diagram. I got a whiteboard back there. I'll bring the whiteboard over here and we'll go, I'll take you to class. I'll take you to class. Um, but as for you, Toxin Rag, tutorial help, you're trying to do some Unity stuff and you're trying to make 3D games. You made short 3D games before, but there's too many functions. I like critical thinking, like solving a problem like a programmer. Cool. Is there a but? Is there a follow-up statement? I'm gonna wait a little bit in case there's a follow-up statement to that. It feels like it's leading. There's the but! There's the but! I'm human. I can think. What's the but? Tell break it down for me. Break it down for me. As I get some chips. I feel like I don't make any progress and, and make the same things over and over again. Okay. So, and I'm, uh, so we can do some follow up questions, right? Because I'm curious about things you're actually doing, the nitty gritties, right? But before we do that, we can talk about the general stuff, right? Because keep in mind, right? I have been a professional, let's say a big boy professional programmer for about three years, give or take, right? Before, but I've been programming since middle school, but the programming I did was in GameMaker, which is very much using GML, which is very JavaScript-like. I didn't really focus on programming. I just did programming just to brute force to make a game. Um, so that's about like eight-ish, nine-ish years of me like doing coding, but not having, you know, a formal teacher for it. I was just doing it by myself um, and not really knowing a lot of things like object oriented programming, the idea of polymorph, like stuff like this, right? No idea of it, right? And only the past two years, I would really say I became a real, I'm not gonna say a real programmer, because if you write code, you are a programmer, right? But only in the past couple, the past two years is when I actually started to develop and grow um, as a programmer to the point where I felt confident in my ability to make a game from A to Z. Um, and to be able to solve most problems, right? Now, before then, I really didn't have that confidence. I was kind of finding blind. I didn't know what I didn't know, right? So, here's point one of some advice that may help you out, right? You don't know what you don't know. And there's a lot I didn't know when I got my job. And the only reason I came to know this stuff and started learning about general practices for programming and, you know, you know, uh, learning about object-oriented programming and, and all different pro pro paradigms like functional and, you know, reactive and all this stuff, right? I only started learning that because I started being surrounded by people who A, knew way more than me and had experience doing that and B, who mentored me, right? 
So one step is just to surround yourself, try to find people who know more than you, right? And try to get information from them, right? The most ideal situation you could be in is in a um, like junior, senior uh, relationship where you're working on the same project as somebody else and you're working under them, right? That was incredibly beneficial for me, right? But if that's not the case for you, try to find people online, maybe find discords, find stuff like that. It's very, finding someone who knows more than you and is willing to teach you that stuff is such a crucial thing because it's gonna help expose you to new ideas you never thought about, right? So that's point one. Point one for breaking out of this, right? And let's hold on to this point while I read this. Reputation. How do you start with Unity games? I've been doing Java for two years now and Unity seems quite interesting to get into, but not sure where to get started since I have no idea how to do graphics or models at all. I believe C-Sharp is quite similar to Java. It is. It is. So I'm going to come back to you. I'm going to address your question in a moment. Let me wrap up my point to Toxin Rag real quick. Toxin Rag. Finding a mentor, very, very helpful. Now, that being said, there's some resources you can look into, right? To help you, to, to help you um, find the, expand what you don't know. Try to overcome that, right? If you can't find people, then the other option is to do find do your own research, right? Something I highly recommend is learning about object-oriented programming, and not just programming, but learning how to use re like reusable object-oriented patterns, right? Because you'll oftentimes find these common structures over and over again around it, right? So maybe just take a gander, look, you know, I, a book I recommend. Oy, one second. Now, this is not a book you're gonna read A to Z. I mean, you could if you want to, right? But um, this book, Design Patterns, Elements of Reusable Object-Oriented Software, very helpful, very helpful. It's gonna expose you to a bunch of ideas, a lot of different structures you can use, all well and dandy. It at least gets your brain thinking about this kind of stuff, right? Um, that being said, some general tips for you, and this is less so a solid third point, but just a general thing. Um, and I think it's gonna really tie into the first two points, right? And this ties into my personal experience. During that long time where I didn't know a lot of formal stuff, I would start game projects, but then they would kind of die out, right? And it's due to a bunch of different reasons. But one reason it, it oftentimes died out was due to my lack of knowledge of software development practices, right? How to solve these certain, certain types of problems. How to deal with saving and loading. How do, how do you deal with save data, right? That was a big blocker for me. A long time, I used to make, for years, I'd make games that didn't have any save data because I didn't know how to deal with it and I was too scared for it. So when you encounter problems that you don't know how to handle it, don't run away. Because for like nine years, I did that and I didn't grow as a result of it. I avoided making games that handled save data. I avoided learning about Git and stuff like that. I didn't even know about it, right? And instead of trying to find solutions for those problems, for, instead of trying to overcome it, I let my lack of knowledge dictate what I made. So whenever you come, you come across something that you don't know how to do, right? Well, first of all, work on a personal project, right? And, you know, as you work on the project, if you come across something you don't know, be sure to try to dig deep, go in a rabbit hole. Try to find people who may solve, be able to help you in that endeavor, right? So yeah, that's my advice to you. Going back to rip, uh, rip, uh, Repation, which thank you for the follow, I appreciate it. So, getting into C Sharp. So, you already have Java experience, right? How familiar, how comfortable are you with Java? Like, you know, are you newish to it as well? Have you been using it for a while? Have you been working with it? Or are you a student? Like, what's, what's your story? Let's start there. Hmm. Hmm. Ah. And by the way, I'm gonna be a bit biased. Because a lot of what I did was, like, independent. <laughs> I've always wanted to make games. I always wanted to make a game studio. So I've always been working on personal projects. Very. I've built and an understanding of OOP. I take APCSA already. 
but finished it. I can comfortably work with Mongo Redis. Okay, so you have a, a solid foundation for object-oriented programming. Very cool, very handy in Unity. <clears throat> you have uh, not only that, but you also have a decent spread of information beyond just an application level thing, right? You're familiar with the idea of networking and talking things talking to each other. So that's handy. So, in that case, right? I feel like it's going to depend on what you want to do, right? Because for me, I like learning by actually doing it, right? So for me, when I started doing Unity, I started like doing game dev projects, right? I'll try to start with, you know, try to make a basic mechanic, right? And I go, okay, cool, I made a ball move. How do we uh, go from there, right? What kind of game can I make from that? And I made a top-down game, and then after that, I started making my own sprites and actually having like visuals for it. And then scaling up the complexity of the mechanics from there, right? <clears throat> so, you know, if you have, if you want to start, you can start that way by just doing projects. I think projects are just the best way to do it, right? Um, a lot of the OP stuff is going to translate over, right? Because um, unlike engines like Unity, or like, unlike engines like Unreal, Unity offers you some basic stuff, but you can build your own layer of just pure C-sharp code. Or you can think about just pure Java code, right? Like in, in general, right? In C-sharp, um, in Unity, right? There's one class you're really going to be inheriting from in general. I mean, there's multiple classes technically, but in general, for most game object stuff, um, you're going to be dealing with something called a model behavior, right? And you probably encountered this already if you've been doing tutorials, right? So, character. Character. Yeah. So you're going to see a lot of if anything that's attached directly to a game object that needs to have a start, an update, event, that kind of thing then they're all going to be attached to model behavior. That being said, <clears throat> you have a lot of freedom about how you go about your application logic, your game logic, right? You know, you can make a game that's just purely using model behavior stuff. Um, or you can have, you know, data and have your own backend structure, right? That exists purely in pure C-sharp land. Um, <clears throat> and then, you know, pass references to game objects that way. like. You have a lot of freedom in terms of how you decide to architecture your, your your projects. You have a lot of freedom in terms of how you want to deal with behavior, right? If you want to, you can um, compose behavior, or if you want, you can do inheritance, like I'm doing here, right? Where you have, you know, I have a, a bunch of uh, uh, entities that inherit this character class, right? Um, so that's the nice thing about Unity, right? Is that if there's a certain type of paradigm or structure you're used to, you can very well translate it over, right? So I've seen this happen where, you know, if you know the model view controller model or model view controller paradigm, you can structure that. You can recreate that in Unity or make a model view view model structure and you can do that, right? So like you have model behaviors, but then you can structure your logic over all that stuff. That's the beauty of it. If you're in an engine in Unreal, it's like an engine like Unreal, very different. Because that engine goes, okay, we have our own specific way of doing things. We have our own systems in place. We have our own solutions for a lot of problems. So you can't just layer your own thing on top of us. You have to follow the way we do things and then go from there. So like, if you look at Unreal, um, you'll see this crazy like network of um, inheritance for different things like components, like objects, uh, uh, child graph. Uh, no, 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 no. One second, class structure. What should I, what should I use for C sharp? Like Visual Studio? Okay, I have some takes for there. I'm gonna get to that. Unreal class hierarchy. So like in Unreal, you have this inherent uh, inheritance structure for objects and then even for components and you have to follow this stuff, right? Whereas Unity, here's here's Unity's hierarchy structure, right? Here's everything you have to be aware of about for, for, uh, for Unity. One second, let it load. Hi Yoshi. Say hi to Yoshi, guys. Say hi to Yoshi. Um, while this loads, MBLL, 
I highly recommend Ryder. Ryder is great. Ryder is fantastic. But yeah, like here's here's Unity's here's Unity's inheritance structure. Model behavior. That's it. And then you can do with that whatever you want. And then if you want to have like things like assets that you can assign stuff to, then yeah, you can use a scriptable object inheritance. That's it. Like there's additional stuff you can do, but 90% of the time it's just this. <laughs> it's just this. Okay, so building onto your first experience with Unity, what would you do first? Simple 2D game? Yeah, two, simple 2D game. Um, you know, if you've done rollerball, then cool. Go from there. Like, go go in what direction interests you. That's the most important thing. Like, if you're interested in what you're doing, you're gonna be far more invested in doing it. Um, if I'm gonna be real with you, like my first project, I might even have it still here. Maybe it was a rollerball thing, and then I did some weird GLSL stuff. So I was like doing shader stuff with it before I even um, did stuff. Oh no, it's an, it's my laptop. Ooh, actually, remote. Um, before I go into that rabbit hole, um, but yeah, just whatever interests you, you can start 2D or 3D. I started, I stuck 3D throughout the whole thing. I've never once made a 2D Unity game, like a pure 2D Unity game. Even my current Unity game is 3.5D because I just, I like having 3D. I like having two point, that visual stuff. That's the thing that interests me, right? Other people, like the students I've mentored, they've done different things, you know? I saw someone who really went into, one of the students I mentioned really went deep into like uh, turn-based type, type stuff, right? And, you know, Pokemon style kind of things. And then that's what piqued his interest, you know? So like, it very much is just whatever interests you, right? Because you're gonna learn the skill sets and you, the particular things in Unity that's meant for that, right? And that's fine. Because, you know, specialization's awesome. Um, but yeah, like the be basic thing you do is just start with Rollerball and then build from there. You know, as you start making more complex things, oh, I want my ball to deal damn. I want to have enemies. Okay, now you have to start thinking about enemy scripts and then think about how they should interact with each other. Think about how collision box is going to happen. Okay, cool. For your first game, did you take assets from the public marketplace or what? No, I, I, I did it myself, but it's a bit different because for me, I was, I'm privileged to be an artist and enjoy the process of making art, right? For the most part. So I usually did 2.5D stuff. Um, ah, let me see if I can turn this on. Oh no, that's gonna throttle my internet. So yeah, for me, I did a lot of pixel art stuff, 2D things, if you want, because if it's just a learning thing, you could just take assets from online. You like the Unity Asset Store has so many free assets you can work with. Um. Like, okay, I'm not gonna pull it up right now. But yeah, yeah, I've got no art down whatsoever. <laughs> hey, but you start there. That's how you start. Just start with, start with the thing, man. If you wanna get some assets, treat yourself. Okay, buy it, do it. I've did it before. I got a 3D asset set. Actually, when I was, perfect timing actually. And don't worry, I haven't forgot about you, Embry Embryoliol. I haven't forgot about you. I wanna come back to you in a second. I haven't forgotten you, all right? But I'm just, let me follow the train. So, early, early stages of, of Crimson Crown, early, early stages of Crimson Crown, the game I showed you right now, um, we actually, I actually bought an asset kit, because I was considering just, you know, um, I was considering just using that. And I think, actually, before I expose people's DMs, how about I just go into my, uh, my progress folder? Because I think I have some shots here back in the day when we did that. Uh, and it's probably my C drive. Game development, Cozy Cabin Games. No, that's marketing. Uh, Trixel bit, because it started with that first. Crimson Crown, progress. Oh, I have a lot of cool stuff here. So yeah, like, you know, I did this. The game started off looking like this, where it was just sprites in there. But that's not the buy, buy assets. I was just saying that you can you just you can just draw like on a PNG and then get something cool like this, but uh, no, that's not it. I bought this asset pack, this dungeon asset pack. 
And I was showing off the old item system. I kind of want to bring that back low-key, but it doesn't work for what we're doing. Uh, okay, this is this is it. This is it. This showcases the asset set. So if you want something that looks good, so you can stay motivated to work on it, because that's a real factor. Like people think, oh no, just be a programmer. No, no. Like the way things look and sound also impact how you stay motivated with it. Um, yeah, treat yourself. Just get a, just get a, just get a, just get a um, an asset pack. Treat yourself. It's great. Makes really good art, three good 3D art. Nah, it's okay. We were in, in Discord. You don't need to talk to him. <laughs> all right, it's all right, all right. Okay, so anyways, yeah, Ryder, Ryder, 100%. Ryder, I cannot express to you Ryder, 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 Ryder. Now, here's the hot, here's the hot take. Here's the hot take. If you can afford Ryder, get Ryder. If not, Microsoft Visual Studio is fine. It's, it's, it's whatever. What I recommend personally if you want to, if you, you ever feel tired about touching the mouse to do stuff, boy, do I got news for you. Vim motions, Vim motions, Vim motions. It's fantastic. You can do so much without having to change, without having to change, uh, touch the mouse. It's the greatest way to get tendonitis, but also really sick productivity. Uh, yeah, I've definitely got that. Working on back ends for fun, but not having any front end can be very demotivating to not see any. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's it's crazy. I'd be doing a lot of tickets for this game, but I have nothing to really show because it's all like back end nerd buck tooth looking at. Like it's 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 not it's not the cool stuff that you see, and the cool stuff is not going to even take that much time to do. It's just I need to get this stuff done before I get to the the, the, the dessert. You know, I have to eat my meal before I get to the dessert. Oh yeah, my throat. But yeah, hopefully, hopefully, that provided some some helpful information to you. And of course, there's always a tutorial route. Um, I oh man, it's so weird. It's, when it comes to advice, there's I feel like there's never a right or wrong answer, right? Because like, I could tell you yes. Do tutorials, you'll learn how to do things the right way. But I didn't do that. I did the crack, crackhead way of doing things, right? I remember I wanted to replicate Game Maker and Unity because I was so used to that. So instead of using Unity's 2D sprite uh, animator, I wrote my own material thing, updater, which emulated some Game Maker stuff. And it was super jank. Did not, you know, it, it, I learned a lot from it. I thought it was very cool, and I learned a lot about material stuff from it. And even though I don't ultimately do that anymore, going down that rabbit hole of trying to enforce my own way of doing things, I learned some cool stuff from it. I learned about how Unity handles materials and how to deal with shader properties and stuff like that. So, you know, it's all cool. Student pack. Me and Rep uh, Reputation are probably going to learn Unity together. Let's go! That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That's some real learning hours, man. That's what I'm talking about. Real learning hours. Gas each other up. Gas each other up. Get some competition. Okay, maybe not. Eh, not no, not. I'm not a comp competitive person when it comes to games. I'm more of like, we are a team, and we will live together, or we will die together. Did you check your GitHub wrap, uh, wrapped up 2023? No, I did not. Let's check, let's, let's do that right now.